Hi, my name's Callista Lyon. Uh, I spent my childhood running around on my family's cattle farm in Australia. Um, this is also the stolen land of the Dwadawada peoples. Uh, I now live in Columbus, Ohio, on the ancestral and contemporary territory of the Shawnee, Potawatomi, Delaware, Miami, Peora, Seneca, Wyandotte, Ojibwe, and Cherokee peoples. I would like to acknowledge the grave harm of colonization, the past and ongoing violence, exclusions and erasures of indigenous and African peoples. Again, I look to this continuum of how humans are living. As we diminish biodiversity through land clearing and increasing infrastructure, we will continue to see biodiversity loss and therefore emerging diseases like the one we're currently experiencing. My work doesn't address this moment and pandemic specifically, but speaks to larger ideas of human exploitation of land, more specifically ways of living from colonization in Australia to the present. This research began with Philip Branwhite, a self-described recluse and amateur botanist who lived in my family's farming community. Phil spent over 30 years searching for and documenting native orchids and amassed a large collection of specimens and botanical illustrations. From this archive, I started working with people connected to a specific local endangered orchid, the crimson spider orchid, Caledonia concolor. A violent unmaking attempts to share a history of human change to the box iron bark forest, the ecology where this orchid grows, specifically the threats facing this orchid with extinction. I'm interested in the specifics of an ecology and place as a way to look at both the micro and macro that can share a constellation of images speaking to a collective memory of ecological collapse and also to the incredible lives and mystery of these worlds that often go unknown and unnamed to us. I believe the image in relationship to place to be the most important tool for memory. The images in the show draw from a range of sources, including two local conservationists, Peter Branwhite and Paul Scannell, who created a large photographic archive in an attempt to know and understand this ecology. They needed to know intimately the lives that lived there. I also draw from the images in Australian National Archives that centre on larger historical and ecological changes both directly affecting this orchid, but also more widely across Australia. I also draw from my family's archives. I've included images from bushfires affecting my family in the summer of 2020. Their lives and the life of this orchid are increasingly shaped by their experience of fires, warming temperatures and extended droughts. I share the images of impacts of drought on our cattle and surveillance camera footage taken by local hunters on our property. I also source images from the internet. They usually relate to contemporary mining projects, coal projects, gas extraction. One image shares a depiction of a manatee in Florida where someone had etched into her skin the word Trump. The work also shares images I have made. For example, in the jewellery district in Los Angeles, this area is interesting for their high concentration of orchids. Orchids have a deep cultural history and hold an air of affluence. If you have ever frequented a wealthy business or businesses trying to persuade you of their wealth, there is often an orchid or two sitting pride of place. The highest ratio of orchids to humans outside the, of nurseries and orchid shows I have seen is in the jewellery district of LA. I weave these images together and each projection carries a kind of theme or collection of ideas that dictate which images are used. I've tried to use minimal materials. All the screens were built using found timber and screws from my communities and local building projects. The overhead projectors were purchased secondhand along with the milk crates. A constant theme around this research is the impossibility of knowing, of comprehending the complexity of these histories to imagine new or old ways of living that don't replicate this violence. How do we come to make sense of the fragments in our lives? 
This work in many ways is a way to use these fragments, images circulating and create meaning to tell stories, stories that I feel often go largely unknown. I'm interested in the way a search for knowledge is often masquerading as a search for capital, as we have seen in the colonial and imperial botanical expeditions and what these parallels are today. You can see in an image a farmer in Madagascar protecting his crop of vanilla grown by an orchid. The crimson colour of the space really references the orchid itself, the crimson spider orchid, but also the experience of red symbolically as both colour of warning and stop and also a colour of love. And that tension between love and warning is deeply tied to my understanding of land and of place and the ecological precarity that we're finding ourselves in today.